crafty kitten writes, I generally like my layouts, and I'm always happy when I put them in my albums, but when I look back at them I always think they look really bare. All the pages I have bookmarked are layouts filled with beautiful embellishments. I would really like to make pages with more stuff. Glitter Girl, can you help Crafty Kitten sort her stuff and make pages she loves? Of course I can. This week we'll start by looking at various styles, some different products that make it easy to layer, and a variety of projects. So I've pulled a few out pages from my album to start us off and you may notice that they're not completely blank but they're also not completely filled with embellishment and it depends on the page so sometimes three photos might take up most of a, of a page or here there's just one photo and there's quite a lot of layer and detail in the middle but two large pieces of patterned paper make the rest of the page a little bit more calm Again here there's lots and lots of deal, detail packed into one space, but then there's also quite a lot of just empty craft cardstock left for breathing room around the photo. And in this version there's a bit more, uh, but everything is kept from being too overwhelming by adding that thick border of craft cardstock around the edge and framing the pattern paper that contains all the detailed pieces in the middle. So the breathing room is a really important um, element here and that repeats throughout all these different layouts. But what's also key is realizing that a different level of embellishment suits every scrapbooker and it's great to know what style you're aiming for and don't worry too much if it's more or less embellished than with someone else's. Sometimes though we complete a layout and it just doesn't feel quite finished. So the first project I'm going to run through today is improving a layout. This is from the same album, but you'll see compared to the other layouts that I've just looked at, this layout is a lot more empty. So I'm going to start by adding a frame to the page. Now I don't have a pattern paper that I can add since everything is already glued down. So I'm going to paint a frame onto the edge. I'm just using glimmer mist and a paintbrush to to paint a matching color so the, the frame will be just slightly darker than the craft cardstock background and I'll paint that all the way around all four sides and that can help contain all the different pieces. Then I'm going to go to one of my favorite layering products and that's foldies. These are die cut sheets with all sorts of different flowers that mix and match and they're already match or mix and matched for you. And you just punch them out and then fold them up and they create these little borders and corner pieces from all different types of embellishment and it's a great way to mix different colors and lines and patterns on a layout. Now this particular piece is a corner piece and it's a bit too big for what I already have added to this layout. So what I often do with foldies is to just take them apart. So I'll just cut or tear them in between and then take the little tabs that are left and glue them underneath. And now I have two embellishments instead of one large embellishment. And that means I can place them either side of the photographs so that the eye will naturally connect the two and the photos will be in the middle. So when I improve a layout like this, I am going to take elements straight off the page. And if I need to add more adhesive later, then that's easy enough. So I'm going to work in this bottom corner and I've taken the butterfly off and I will add the flowers over the top. Now, the flowers are a little large for the space I have here and that bottom left hand corner of the photo is not important that's why it's okay for me to cover it up because what I want in the picture is higher in the frame and um, so because this little petal doesn't fit off the side I'm just going to tear it off and move it and that's how easy foldies are to use you can just kind of rearrange them as it as fits your layout so then I want to create a spot on the other side of the layout where the other half of the foldy will live. So I'm just peeling up different layers and sometimes it's easier to pull certain parts of the page up than others. So it's just kind of a, a see how it goes adventure when you're improving a layout that just hasn't seemed quite finished. And then label stickers are one of my key elements for adding more stuff to a layout. So I can add one each to 
each of those foldy flower areas that I just added, and then perhaps one in one of the open spaces of the layout. And to keep them all matching everything else on the page, I just add the same color of brown distress ink to the edges because I've done that with all the papers that were already there and then all the other elements. Now another way to make sure the, the layers are obvious is to use some foam squares or pop dots. These are round pop dots from American Crafts, but there's all sorts of different kinds and it's just a, a, a case of finding what you like or grabbing what's on sale, whatever works easier. <laughs> and so I'll add um, the pop dots to the back of the label stickers and then wherever I place them, they, will, um, they won't just sink into the, to the design and get lost. So it's a great way to take smaller elements and give them a bit more prominence by adding that dimension. One thing that can really help uh, fill in gaps and add some continuity to a layout is to add something that can be used in horizontal or vertical strips. So I'm going to use washi tape for that. And I've chosen one that's a dark brown because all of the colors on this layout are starting to get a bit, a bit muddled where there's not a really dark shade to pull everything together. So I'm just going to start with the areas where I've already added embellishment and I'm just adding a strip here and there of the brown tape and and that will help create a visual anchor where your eye will go to those darker colors. And then I'm also going to kind of add one up toward the top of all that embellishment where the top butterfly is. Other things that go really well at this stage are smaller items. So I've pulled out some buttons and some brads and I've matched the color of the thread for the buttons with that dark um, brown tape. So um, I'll just place these in different areas around the page, but I'm, I'm hoping that wherever I place the embellishment, the photos, the title, and the journaling should fall in between there. Now this is another element. I don't have that same green paper that I cut the butterflies from before because it's an older layout. So I've looked for other things I could mix and match, and I have these craft butterfly stickers and the sheet has more than one size. So I can mix that up with the green butterflies that were already on the page and keep that embellishment, but kind of have a bit more to play with so that I can just add more stuff, as you say. And to finish it, I've sewn on buttons in little groups. I've added some brads. And so now there are a lot, there's a lot more color than that page originally had, a lot more texture, and just areas that are more developed rather than just a single punch on its own on a, gra on a craft background. So I'm much happier with this and also with that frame to pull everything together. Label stickers, buttons, small stickers, washi tape, and that really improved what I felt was a, a layout that was a bit too bare. So now is a good time to stop and, and have a little look at different kinds of products that I find really helpful. And this first shout out goes to Sassafras, which sadly is a company who have announced they're no longer going to make scrapbooking products. But the foldies, the stickers, and these embellished flowers are some of my favorite things for layering. And these are all, and um, they're all on their last chance to get them because there won't be any more. Um, then background stamps would be next on my list. Something repetitive like polka dots or wood grain. And this wood grain stamp is also on clearance, so it's at a great 50% off discount at the moment. Next, die cuts. They come individually, like these by My Mind's Eye. Or you can grab a whole pack sometimes. This is a set from Amy Tangerine for American Crafts. And then when you have all the different sizes in a pack or different pieces in, that you've put together but from buying them individually, sometimes you can create an embellishment cluster just from die cuts. So you can pick through and look for different sizes and shapes and different colors, and you can figure out which ones that you might put on pop dots, and, and then you can create a little embellishment area that's just made from that one pack. Or you can spread them out over several layouts and obviously get quite a lot just from one package of die cuts. So definitely something that I use in layers quite often. Right, then moving on to some other things. Word stickers are something I use a lot, like these that are at the bottom of this large sheet from Simple Stories in the Yearography collection. But there's all sorts of different brands that do word stickers, and I find them a good thing to go in and add. Labels are something I layer up all the time. So these small sheets are from My Mind's Eye. 
These are from Studio Calico and they are on sale at the moment, so definitely worth checking out. They come in all different colors and they're really versatile. This Studio Calico set is also on sale and also really good because it has a bit more of a variety. So there are some labels, but there are also borders and small circles and some little word blocks. And then the labels from October Afternoon are also great. Love them. Washi tape is something I use quite a lot, and, and there's all sorts of different designs. Some from um, MT, some from Smash, some from Hambly, some from American Crafts. Um, and later on I'll show you a set of tapes that, they're not washi tapes, but a set of tapes from KI Memories. And then things to cut paper with. Um, the Nestabilities dies work really well for being able to create layers because you can take the different pieces and they all layer up. So you can use a scalloped circle and a pinked circle and a plain circle and you can create layers with all different papers really easily because the dies will, um, will fit perfectly graduated. So they are really useful. This postage stamp punch is by Fiskars and it punches really easily and it's a great shape for, for layering. It's just something slightly different than a regular rectangle and also a notebook paper edge to, um, to a border for a border punch. This is from the American Crafts Knockout set. And it just adds a really lovely um, different dimension to the edge of a paper so it looks like it's taken out of a notebook rather than just a straight edge. And used sparingly is a really nice detail. Several different brands do versions of that that you can check out. And then I get into really small embellishments. So buttons come in all different colors and different shapes and sizes. And if you use a lot of ribbon or tags, then stick pins can be really nice. And then these are called candy dots by Pebbles. They come in buttons, gem, and pearls. Um, and they just stick to the page and fill a little dot or can add a layer. So that's a very quick look at some of my favorite products for layering. Let's move on to making some pages. And my first piece of advice is that it actually helps to start earlier than you might think. So if you compare these two starting points, the one on the right on the white background actually has more layers and pieces of paper, but the fact that the one on the left has a patterned paper background makes it look less plain from the start. So I'm going to take you through both of these layouts, but the white background is a little bit more intimidating. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some paint and splatter some color to make it a little bit less stark. So I'll do that in a few layers. On this particular layout, I'm going to add gray and pink. And the trick here is to use some sort of line, that imaginary line across the page. So I, I'm drawing an imaginary line from near the bottom left corner to the top right corner so that everything goes along that. Now, here's the tape I mentioned before. Now, this is not washi tape because it's um, it's more like a cellophane tape or a, the, a kind of clear tape rather than the tissue, t tissue paper tape of washi. Um, but this set from KI Memories includes one each in white, black, and pink to match this line. And I'm just going to start by layering that over the pattern paper blocks so that I can start adding in some layers and texture before I even start to add the photograph. And I'm adding the white first and then that bold pink on top so that it's um, a bit more obvious. And whatever I add to the bottom left, I'm going to add to the top right as well. So we'll layer first of the white tape and then the hot pink stripes on top. So whatever I do once, I try to, to do again, either, um, either two or three times on a layout so that there's the continuity and I don't end up with too many empty spaces. It's fine to have quite a lot of white space, but it makes, um, if you put things close together, it does help. So see, I've, I've gotten rid of the empty gap next to the black and white zigzag by placing the photo strip there. And that makes everything come together a little bit more because there's no gaps where a piece of paper has ended and, and there's an awkward space in the middle. So you're getting rid of any trapped space. So now that I have the photo down, I'll add another layer of the tape and this time I'll go with the black print. And I can just add that right over the empty space in the photograph where I'm not going to lose any value of the photo by putting it over a little bit of the background. Now these are those sassafras stickers and again these are discontinued but they are available in the store at the moment so grab them while you can. These are some of the most um, 
most simple embellishments to in, in terms of if you want to have a lot of stuff on your page but still create pages really quickly. They come in all different colors to match their different collections, but the shapes are always the same. And they're just something I, I find really, really easy to use. I often put them on pop dots, so that's what I've done here. I've started with the big pink flower, and then um, I want to add a little bit more color instead of just the pink and black and white. So I'm going to add this blue star as well. So now I'm going to start in this um, triangle around the photos. I have all this layering and everything's kind of on an L shape with that diagonal. And now with the embellishment, I'll start to add things a bit more directly in a triangle to bring the photos into um, into the, the real focal point of the page. Now, that star isn't stuck down quite yet. I've just um, put it on pop dot so I can move it around and decided I wanted to be able to bring in some pink there and also a bit more layering. So I'm gonna start with label stickers and that one is from October Afternoon. And then I thought I would try this one because it fits the theme, but the color is not quite a match and it's brown type instead of black and it just looked too distressed for the cleanness of the other paper designs. So I put that one back. I can use that on another project some other time. So I'll layer the star over this label and that means I need to look at a third place to add something. So if my photo is right there in the middle, I have that empty space up at the top, that's where my third embellishment is going to go. And the perfect bit is I can take something from that sheet that uses both the pink and the blue, and that pulls it all together. So I'm going to use this pink and blue heart from the same, same sticker sheet and combine it with some label stickers from the same sheet as the other label sticker that I used. And that way things are repeating, they're not identical, but they will all fit together and have a cohesive look. Now I'll skip ahead to the title and one of the other things that I often do on my pages is to use two different fonts for my title or even more and that helps create this illusion that there's more stuff on the page. And then I take any gaps and fill them with handwriting. So I don't tend to put all my journaling in one spot, I tend to balance it around the page. So here there's journaling and handwriting by the title down below the photos, to the right of the photos is the extensive journaling, and then a little funny caption up at the top right where I've added that bit more embellishment. Now I'm gonna to start to add in smaller things. So I'm using some of the, um, the candy dots that are white with a glittery finish. And I'm just placing them in groups of three on the tape that I've added. So I'm, I'm looking for something to repeat. So I place them on the tape in one place, then I'm gonna to go to another spot on the layout and add them on the tape there too. So I'm just repeating. To bring a bit of blue into that cluster down there at the bottom right corner, I went back and found a blue heart sticker and added that on a pop dot. So I'm just trying to make sure that each cluster of embellishment on the page includes all the different elements. Then another thing that helps is to find things that add a little bit more texture. So I'm using this um, Baker's Twine from Doodlebug and I'm going to add it to all three areas of embellishment. And I'm just going to find little lines where I can place them one right across the page, then the next one is a shorter piece and then the one at the top is a very short piece. And what I'll do to add even more dimension is I will sew buttons on the end of the twine to um, to secure them to the page. So I've then also got the another layer of stuff in that I've put the buttons onto. So here are, um, here's pretty much everything finished. Buttons are sewn down, twines on, and I just wanna add a little bit more sparkle because the letters are very glittery. So this font has tiny little asterisk stickers. I'm just going to add those to the embellishment, um, embellishment areas too. And that creates another triangle where the, the hot pink glitter is in that visual triangle too. And then everything goes right to the center. You find the photograph. And that brings us to the second layout. Now this one already looks busier because it has a pattern paper background. And with this one, I'm going to start with some stamping. So I'm going to use this wood grain stamp and I'm just stamping this in brown on an off cut of craft cardstock where I've used half the sheet and it has some white and shine mist on there. So I'm just going to um, stamp that on um, and I, 
I want a variety of pieces and they're not going to come together perfectly because I'm going to punch them out. So I'm just going to stamp on different pieces and I'm not going to worry if the stamping is completely perfect because it will look fine by the time it's been punched and inked and, and layered. So I just want to cover this with various bits of wood grain. And then I'll cut these apart so that I can use a circle punch. And I'm, I punch all six, but in the end I end up using three of these circles. So then I want to layer these up with the Nestabilities dies, and this is how I find which die I need. I just place the the element that I want to um, to mat on top of the stack of dies, and then I can pick out the one that will be the best frame. And I'm going to cut a layer that's a, a plain circle and a layer that's a scallop circle for each of these so that the finished embellishment will have three layers. So with three of these finished, then I'm going to use that triangle technique again. My photo is going to go there on the, on the large cream colored block. So I want to create a triangle of embellishments that will keep that in the center. So I'm going to have one at the top of the page, one at, at, at the side of the photo, and one at the bottom. But once I've figured out those places, I'm going to move them out of the way so that I can add a little bit of ink behind them. So I'm going to add some sprinkles of ink in the um, buttermilk color from October Afternoon Sprinklers and also some pink and brown glimmer mist. Now adding ink to your layout or, or spray mist or anything else like that is definitely a stylistic choice and you may prefer your layouts to be a bit more clean in which case you can completely leave that step out. However, if you're looking at your layouts and seeing that certain parts of the page are a bit sparse and you feel that they need a little bit some, a little bit more, this layer is a really easy way to add that little bit of something more. It doesn't add any depth to the page because there's, there's no extra layer, it's just going to be flat. So it won't make your page too bulky and um, with a little bit of practice you'll you'll get this idea of where the paint is going to go and it will be easier than you first think. So once that's dry then I'll add the embellishments to those three places and I'm just tucking things behind so I don't want any empty space. So one goes underneath, one goes on top, there, then obviously I'll add more things to the one that's up there in the corner. But I just want to make sure that um, I don't don't leave big gaps or even just small gaps in an area of embellishment. If I can push it together, then that will make it work more fluidly. So now I'm going to figure out where I'm going to place the photo. And the title on this page is going to go somewhere that's perhaps a little bit unexpected, which is to the left of the photo, so in the direction of the photo where it's looking. And before I add the title, I'm going to start in with the washi tape now. So I want to repeat things. If I put something in once, I'm going to put it in again. So a strip of washi tape for each of the circle embellishments. So if you start with embellishments that repeat, this becomes really simple because whatever you add to one of those circles, then you'll add to the other two. So I've got the, um, the brown wood grain washi tape, but also then this hot pink washi tape that says it's the little things. So I'll just repeat the same pattern. If it goes on one, then it goes on all three. And just like before, I've used more than one font for the title. This time I used a cream colored mini market sticker instead of the small black tiles, those same hot pink glittery thickers. So um, that creates an, an illusion of more stuff than just one font. And it also means that you can use a longer title because you can use the smaller letter stickers. Then I'm going to add in some label stickers. So these are the, the pink label stickers from Studio Calico. And I'm just going to tuck them behind this edge that's been punched with the border, um, the notebook border punch that I showed you earlier. So I'm just adding different things. So if I've added a label to one circle, then I want to repeat that. So I'll add labels to the other two. Now you could just add the writing to the page and then leave it there, it has enough stuff. But if you want another layer, I decided to add in another color. So I started with this life embellishment that had the yellow and then punched some yellow, or yellow hearts to add to each of the embellishment areas to balance off that extra color and threw in a few more craft butterflies as well, the same ones that I used before. So there's my layout with plenty of stuff, I hope, and it's time for your challenge. So get creating this week with layers and, well, stuff. So upload your project to Two Peas in a Bucket. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl 
and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com. <laughs>